All right, um, I've had my Blackview BV9500 Pro for like two and a half months now. And I wanted to do like a little follow-up video with it. Uh, obviously, it's way better than my first one. My first one broke like the first day I had it. Um, this one hasn't. Um, I haven't been as hard on this one because that first one I really tested it, and I don't know. The step and I probably wasn't with both my feet and jumping. Probably wasn't the best idea, but um, wanted to share a few thoughts. Um, I guess I'll start with the good things first. Um, as you'd expect, the battery life is awesome with this thing. Um, I tested it, and I work in an area that doesn't have very good cell phone coverage. And I also had two SIM cards loaded in the phone at the time because I was trying a different service for T-Mobile. And I was able to get a full three days out of it, playing games like my silly boom beach, watching YouTube, uh, you know, calls, texts, things like that. Um, Still holding up pretty good, except I wanted to go with the good. I did crack the the glass on the camera. Um, that's a bad thing. Uh, one thing I kind of didn't like is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but when you put it down, that makes contact. Um, a little rubber bezel around it would have done it a world of good. Um, or if it was Gorilla Glass, I thought it was. I guess it's not. The good news on that is this is like a $4 piece to buy and you just undo some of the screws to replace it. Um, once that piece comes in, I'll make a video showing how to replace that piece of glass and I'm gonna try to come up with a fix, something really cheap to put on here to prevent it from breaking again. Um, anyway, so what I did is I made a little notes file. Um, and here, here's some of the things, I'm gonna make some of these requests to Blackview on the forums too. Uh, if you don't know the form, I'll share a link to it. Um, the Google bar that's on the top, you can't remove it. And I'm talking about this. If you have the phone or you're looking at the phone, you saw it, you can't remove that. My other phones used to be able to hold it like a widget and get rid of it. And it stays just on that home screen. Didn't particularly like that. Um, make more apps able to be disabled. The ones that I noticed are the notes, and this is not the Google Notes like the one I'm using now, it's the notes that like comes with the phone. The browser, that's like the stock one. One of the apps was File Manager. I, I got an update three weeks ago. That app is now gone, and it was replaced with the Google Files app, which is a lot more useful. I like that one. There's one called Files, and there's one called Music. Again, I don't know why there's multiple called files, but to be able to remove those would be great. Um, with their first update, what they did do is uh, make an option in the settings to disable the PTT button, uh, the push to talk for the two-way radio. If you watch my other video, I show you how to go into the developer options and disable it. I still have mine disabled that way because when you disable the push to talk button with the setting that is in the phone, with the update, it disables it altogether. So even if you wanna use the push to talk button when you have the intercom app open, it doesn't do it. They should fix it and give you maybe a second option where you can say PTT button is still active if the intercom app is open. Um, the clear all option, that's at the bottom of the task screen. I don't know if this is just this version of Android the way it is, but like I open up my tasks here. I was looking on my eBay thing to see when I bought it. It would be nice if it was right here that I could disable the apps. You have to scroll all the way up and hit the clear all. Now, I don't have that many open right now. Be nice to see that at the bottom. Um, in the developer options, uh, selecting share ringtone to your Bluetooth device. I did that. It always turns itself off when you leave the developer options menu. I wanted to be able to share my ringtone through Bluetooth to a headset that I wear uh, when I'm working and also to uh, my truck. Um, the phone's loud enough, so really you can just have the ringtone on the phone and it, it's, it's enough, but it would be nice if it could come through the speakers. Um, in the, when you're recording videos with the phone, I noticed strange background noises. It was almost like fuzzy 
and then I don't know how to describe it, but if you've ever put your phone down when it's trying to receive like a call, a text message, when you're watching a video, and it causes like that buzzing, like bzz, 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 it like affects the speaker. You can hear that when the video is recording. Um, that was strange. I don't know if that's a hardware issue that they can't get rid of. It doesn't do it all the time, but I did notice it. Um, in the camera app, um, I don't know what the ZSD uh, means as an option. Uh, what I'm talking about here is You go into the options, the ZSD. I don't know. I didn't notice any difference with the pictures. Um, one of the other things, too, that I told um, Blackview about why I'm in this menu is the capture sound. Um, you can disable it so it doesn't take the shutter noise. Like, for example, it makes that noise. What... It does not disable when you disable the shutter noise is that beep when it focuses. Um, say you're trying to take a picture of like, like my daughter just came in here, your kids when they're sleeping and all of a sudden it might wake them up. Uh, my dog is actually strangely afraid of loud beeps, high pitched beeps and it scares them. Uh, it would be nice to be able to turn that option off as well. Um, Uh, the bottom one I put camera glass, glass isn't Gorilla Glass. I guess not. Um, also in the camera app, when you hold it down, AE slash AF lock. I don't know what that means. Uh, Jay, you're a, kind of a camera guy. Do you have, is that like a term? Auto exposure, auto focus. So, it, so does that mean that it locks on the setting that It'll, you picked? Correct. Okay, well, I guess you could have just asked the camera person and... Now I know. Um, yeah, so those were like my little notes. Um, I'm still happy with the phone. It's definitely big. Um, I got the company slip grip car mounts to make the custom mount uh, for this phone, and they're selling it now. I'll share a link in the description, and I'll splice in over at my truck show, and it clipped in real quick. It's, it's very solid. They make a bunch of different options for it. Um, Here's the uh, slip grip car mount that I was talking about. Um, I actually contacted this company and they made it for this phone. Uh, not just for me, it's for sale on their website. Like I said earlier, um, I have the option with the RAM type mount that I have mounted to my dashboard. Um, they make all kinds of different ones. Uh, check the link in my description for it. I do a lot of off-road driving with my truck, everything. Uh, this phone is heavy. It goes right in, it, it's in there solid. Easy to take in and out. You can use most of the buttons. You can see your push to talk, volume up and down. If you wanted your antenna on here, so if this is mounted in something where you wanted to be using the two-way radio with it mounted, you can. Your power button, your uh, quick shortcut, your headphone jack coming off the bottom. The only thing you can't access is your fingerprint, which there really would have been no good way to clip this thing in without blocking that. So it sucks that that's blocked, but it is what it is. Uh, great mount. I think it's worth the money. Some people might think it's expensive, but this very, very heavy phone has virtually no movement, even with off-road driving. Super easy to get in and out. I put it in and out of this thing 10, 20 times a day, and it hasn't broke. So far, I've used Cricket, which runs off the AT&T network, and T-Mobile, and I've used both of them at the same time. Um, if you've never used a phone with two SIM card slots, in your options menu. I can't go into the options menu and show you how it works because it's gonna show like my phone number and stuff which I don't wanna put all over YouTube. With Some weirdos be sending me some weird stuff I bet. But um, you can like select if you want it so when you go to make a phone call, every time it will ask you, hey, which SIM card slot do you wanna use? You can give the SIM cards your own personalized name. Like for me when I had it, I just named it Cricket and T-Mobile or you can set it to always go on T-Mobile, but when the phone is dialing, there's actually a button where you can switch the number really quick to the other SIM card, which I thought was really cool. You have to pick a primary one to use data, so it won't automatically switch back and forth to whatever one is the fastest, 
the SIM cards cannot be used at the same time. I asked them about that to like say increase your speeds if you could download data with both SIM cards at the same time, two carriers. Um, not the case, doesn't work. Um, you know, and all the other stuff like text messages as well. It will ask you if uh, which one you want to be primary. And then when you're in the text message menu talking to somebody on the right, uh, as I'm talking about it, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about without showing a phone number of somebody. Um, this, like with my wife, what it will do is down here on the right hand side where it's just the send button for SMS, like I'm typing hi here, you, there's a little arrow and you could pick it and it'll pick whatever the names are, like Cricket and T-Mobile, and you could switch between the two. Um, it will also display it on your messages menu. Um, but having the two SIM cards is pretty cool. Like say if you had a business number or a work number and your personal number, you can keep it separate. Um, it does have voice over LTE option. You can see it's working up there. Um, I can't think of anything else to really say um, about it so far. Um, it works. It hasn't really given me any glitchy problems. Uh, some people had problems with the over-the-air updates installing and causing a boot, boot issue. I didn't have the problem. I downloaded it, installed it, it worked. Um, forgot the last thing, and it probably won't do it now, and you might not be able to hear it. It's like there's something loose in the phone. At first, what I thought it was was just these buttons moving around a little bit, but it goes away and comes back. It's almost like there's like a, maybe a screw inside the phone. Um, I guess I'll find that out when I open the phone up to replace the glass if something's just in there floating around. But um, yeah, I guess that's it. Two and a half months in. I mean, I've dropped it plenty of times. I've gotten it wet. Hasn't been an issue.